Alrighty, season two, let's go. <laughs> I'm Lizzie Friedman, this is Inside Ambition, and you're on 34th and Art, the place where we talk all things arts and entertainment in and around Drexel University. Welcome spring, welcome a new term, and welcome a brand new season of the show. A lot has changed in our very short little break, but don't worry, the 34th and Art team is as good as ever. This week, we're looking at sculptures. Again, don't call it a comeback. Last term, we looked at a few sculptures spotted around campus, but the list goes on. Some of these sculptures you might have never even noticed because you're just so used to seeing them around, but we took a deeper look and found out some history behind these sculptures. If you're ever out grabbing a wholesome halal meal at the Halal Guys truck right outside the DAC, arguably the best truck on campus, but that's a discussion for another day, then you've seen momentum. It looks like a running man in a circle you know the one. Well, it's made by Michael Speller, and the piece is made completely out of bronze. One of the larger statues on Drexel's campus is a statue of Anthony Joseph Drexel himself, right outside of LeBeau Hall. This towering giant is made out of bronze and marble and created by Moses Jacob Ezekiel, who created a variety of other sculptures on Drexel's campus, including a smaller marble bust of AJ's head inside of the main building. Obsessed much? We've talked a lot about outdoor sculptures on campus, but there's actually some sculptures that stand inside of Drexel buildings as well. If you head into the main building, the first thing you notice are those giant steps, and then you have to figure out how to get to class. Curtis Hall, Randall Hall, and I think there's another one? I don't know. I've been here for three years and I still don't know how to get around that place. Anyway. One of the many art pieces that you'll see on your way up those steps are the candelabras. These two are at the base of the stairs. Bronze children holding up a light. I guess that's cool. Kinda creepy. Also inside the main building is the water boy. You may remember hearing a tradition that students would rub the toe on this one for good luck on exams. Well, that was just a load of baloney because I have never ever seen or heard anybody doing that. So I guess it was just a little Drexel myth. But this one is also made out of bronze and made by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, whose name might sound familiar because he also happened to design a little lady you might know as the Statue of Liberty. Speaking of Lady Liberty herself, the Drexel collection actually has a model of her in all her glory. Who knew we were that special? Pretty cool flex though. It's not quite as big as the OG lady in New York City, but hey, that's just one more thing in common that we have with Las Vegas. For a university that was founded in 1891 with an all male attendance exclusively in the main building, they had quite a lot of statues of half-dressed women, including that of Sapphos, a 58-inch marble statue by William Wetmore Story, originally from Italy. This statue sits on the right side of the staircase in the great hall of the main building, almost hidden by the stairs. Why would you want to hide her? She's gorgeous. Over at the Queen Lane campus lies a resin and graphite paint sculpture reasonably entitled Ferns with a cute little backstory. The sculpture was created by Stephen Robin, but donated to the university by his wife, Susan Levy, after his passing. In her husband's honor, Susan donated it with the comment, in loving memory of my Stephen, may his legacy of making the world a more beautiful place live on through his ferns. The finest gift is one which helps others live longer and enrich lives. Love, Susie Levy. Aww. Get you a significant other that will donate your art like that. And now that the weather is getting warmer, why not go for a stroll and spot all the sculptures around campus, maybe even flex your knowledge on a date, and they'll instantly fall head over heels for you. Better yet, create a sculpture and then donate it to the university in their name. How sweet. But don't come back to me when it doesn't work. If there's a sculpture on campus that you love that maybe we haven't talked about or maybe we have talked about, let me know in the comments down below. You probably won't, but it was worth a shot anyway. 
Thanks so much for sticking around. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at inside underscore ambition and subscribe to us on YouTube for all the latest content. I'll see you right here next week at the same address. Bye for now.